Hello, hello everybody. How's everybody doing? I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm just gonna chatter for just a minute. I am live here on the Elizabeth Crafts Facebook page. And we're gonna talk about some fun stuff today that have to do with the pizza box. So I'm just kind of waiting. I see some people joining in. Hello, hello. Okay, awesome. I'm trying to see you over here on my iPad at the same time. Maybe it's a little bit delayed. Let's see. Overview. I can see you over there on my desktop and I'm waving at you. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Here we go. See page. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing good? <clears throat> there I am. Okay. Oh, look at all of you. Okay, so sorry for my delay there. I'm going to turn down my volume over here. Oh, look at all of you. Yes, there I am talking. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have a different setup, so I'm getting used to it. It's much better this way. Uh, I can see all the comments really well. I've turned my iPad the tall way, and now I can see everything very clearly. Hi from snowy Montreal, Jane Powell. Hello. Wow, look at everybody joining in. I'm so happy. Hi from Texas. Pat Ford is watching. Anita is there. I see you, Anita. Virginia, Annie, Gina. Hi from Tennessee, says Gina. Okay, awesome. Well... I'm gonna chit chat for just a few, just a few more minutes, and then we'll get started on the project. But I will tell you, um, both Els and I uh, had our second vaccine yesterday, and we're both very happy that it's over with. <laughs> we were chatting back and forth yesterday on Messenger, checking in with each other and uh, seeing how we were feeling. I think we both got through it pretty well. It was, it was, you know, it wasn't a great day, but lots of rest. There's Rita, Sabrina, Sue shouting out from Texas. Um, yeah, so I think I can speak for Els too that we're doing much better today and we're just glad that it's done and over with. There's Sue, the flowers are beautiful. Thank you, Sue. Candace. Um, so I love making the pizza boxes. I don't know about you guys. I just feel like they're just such a great little gift holder, gift card holder, um, little candy box. Uh, if you could make a pizza this small, wouldn't that be cute? <laughs> you could make a cookie that looks like a pizza. Uh, so I've made a lot of pizza boxes in the past. Uh, hi, Catherine from Massachusetts. Hello to Judith, Helene. England, Linda from England, hello. Uh, so I've made a lot in the past, and uh, here's just a few. I've shown these on different videos, I'm pretty sure. And they're all very cute, right? But usually inside, I just have like some more paper and maybe a little note holder. And so I thought it would be fun to add one more little element to it and make a pop-up. And then after I made a pop-up, then I made several pop-ups. So I will show you just a real quick peek. Hello, Irene. I am new to the pizza box, says Kristen. Well, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So here's the top of this one. I'm going to make another one very, very similar to this. Uh, maybe a few different colors, just because I don't know about you as a crafter. Uh, I tend to not want to make exactly the same thing the next time I make it. So I am going to switch up the colors a little bit, uh, but I am going to be using the same line of paper, which is from Graphic 45, and it's called Bird Watcher. I always have to be careful I don't call it Bird Catcher. For some reason, I want to call it that. But inside, we're going to learn how to make a pop-up. And this one has two pop-ups. I'm actually going to make three in the sample that I'm going to make today. Thank you, Brooke. She says these are so cute. Hello from Colorado, Danielle. Uh, what kind of paper for the pizza box base? Okay, we'll talk all about that, but basically some good strong cardstock is what I would recommend. Um, at least 80 pound weight, which I usually use basil cardstock for that. Uh, but anyway, here's what we're gonna do. 
We're going to use a lot of the new dyes. And um, so one thing, a couple of things that I learned before I got started was um, we probably all have made a simple pop-up in a card, right? And so it's just really that. It's just a, it's just a partial square with a single fold and, you know, the card can fold nice and flat. Well, you can't do that with the pizza box, right? Because the pizza box is dimensional and has this square edge to it, right? So you have to accommodate for that. And this is my little prototype, as you can see, uh, testing it out and trying it and seeing what works and what didn't. So you have to have a little extra bend, if you can see that there. You have to have a little extra bend in there for this to then fold nice and flat, do you see? You can't just do a single fold. So I learned that from just experimentation. So it can't look like this. You can't use any pop-up dies that you might have in your stash. You have to kind of make this yourself and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, before we get too deep though, I do want to congratulate Anne Acevedo, who was our winner from Monday's Live for the $50 gift certificate from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Uh, congratulations to Anne. Now, how can you win, of course, by liking, commenting, and sharing this video as we go. And then you get entered into the drawing for Friday's live drawing. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm getting a little dry already. I hope you couldn't hear that. <clears throat> Absolutely adorable pizza box, says Sabrina. Thank you. Ann Peterson is watching. Yes, congrats to Anne. Welcome, Andrea. Congratulations to Anne. Jeanette Smith is watching. Yes, so Anne Acevedo, she is our winner. So if you are not familiar with the Pizza Box die, it is uh, a nice big long one. 1781 is the number. And this is how I happen to store my bigger dies. It's just a file folder. I show this in one of my videos. I just stitched down this right edge and then I leave the rest of it open and I make a little, well, a big circle notch here. And then onto a piece of cardboard, I put my magnet sheet and then all the pieces. And then I put a little label over there. Hello from Germany, Hildegard, welcome. I had to leave for a second, where did the birds come from? Oh, Brooke, that's from um, uh, Graphic 45's Bird Watcher collection. Not Bird Catcher, <laughs> Bird Watcher. So anyway, that's the die. And we're going to make a blue one this time. And so this is how it looks when you cut it out flat. I've got some double-sided adhesive already on a lot of the tabs here. And that's just to save a little bit of time from messing with it later. But the, you're looking at the inside of the box, okay? So this paper here is also from the Graphic 45 collection in their Patterns and Solids. And this particular die is also from the pizza box die set. It has a little scallop square in there. So I just went ahead and cut two and put them into those places inside the pizza box for now, okay? And that's the thing you need to remember is anything that you're gonna do in here with the pop-ups, you have to do before you assemble the box. That's kind of important. Um, let's see, you say, is that a new die? The pizza box die is not new. It's been around for a little bit. I would say maybe even from last summertime. So just check the website. I'm sure that it's still there and available for sure. Okay, so how do we do that fancy little pop-up? So I have a main pop-up. You can do this any way that you like, but I have one main big one right here. And then I have a little small one back there. And like I said, we're gonna make three actually on this next one. So my main one is the biggest piece here. And so I just use the same color cardstock that I'm working with. And this measures two and a half by three and a half inches. Okay, and so what you have to do, I made several pizza boxes for Christmas gifts. Now I have to do the pop-ups. Okay, good. All right, so I'm putting it in with the three and a half uh, across the top of my little scoreboard here. And I want you to score it at one half inch, one and three eighths inches, one and three quarter inches, and then three. Okay, and you'll just fold on all those score lines. And then you'll have this kind of shape. 
So when I showed you at the beginning how you have this extra little bit here, that's what you need for the pizza box to be able to close properly and not get all mashed, okay? All right, so before I put this away, we're gonna go ahead and do these others, all right? I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Now these can be regular little square pop-ups. See how they're gonna go flat? Because these are going in that upper part right in here. So they don't need to, because they're not going across this section here where the whole box folds down. Uh, they can be like the old pop-up style, okay? So these measure, uh, this longer, thicker one is three and a half by three quarters. And then this one is two and a half by one half. Those are just random sizes I picked because I knew what I was gonna put in front of them. So when you take this bigger one, we're gonna score this guy. Let me move my little thing here. So this is the three and a half by three quarter. We're gonna score it at one half, one and a half, two, and three. So this is gonna be more of a rectangle one, which is gonna push it out closer to you when you open up the pop-up card, okay? And my littler guy, that was two and a half by one half, you're just gonna score it at a half of an inch all across. So one half, one, one and a half, two. And then this one is gonna fold up and overlap on itself into a little square. Okay, and that'll squish and open as you open and close your card. Okay, so knowing that, and having done one already, I learned that it was kind of pretty to put some decorative paper on the top part that's gonna be showing. That's an option. I'll show you one later. Like if you stick around for the end of the video, you'll see uh, a very masculine option to doing this, using some different dyes and different things from Elizabeth Crafts, where I didn't put any paper on the top, and so you'll be able to compare what you like better. But here is the equivalent of this piece of paper we just scored. So I've put the compatible paper that you see here, here, just on these sections. And I did cut separate pieces just because, you know, it folds a little easier than trying to put one piece and fold it again. But on that first scored area and that last scored area, that's where I have adhesive, okay? And you see how this section is bigger than this one? That's important to remember because the first thing that you're gonna do is peel this off off the top, the widest one, peel it off the top. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna adhere just above that top score line. And when I say top score line, I mean of the pizza box backing there. So up close, can you see? It's almost in line with our scallop border thing here. So I'm just pushing that down and then I wrote a little fold. <laughs> because you do have two lines here, we're gonna fold down on this one, basically folding this in half. We're gonna peel this one up. Okay, and then we're gonna fold this up. Now, it's important to know that you're gonna fold on this first bottom line here, not this one up here. So I'm gonna take that straight up Cross your fingers, hold your breath. Okay, ta-da. Oh my gosh, I love it when things work out when you do a live. <laughs> I did test it like a zillion times, but still, you just never know, you know? So, okay, and I'm sorry you're hearing sirens back there, but I do live in an apartment. It's a beautiful day and I have the windows open, so I hope that's not too distracting and doesn't go on for too long. But you can see it's basically like a little little chair back there. And the only place that there's that one little slant is right there. And so now the box will close nice and flat and not curl or get mushed, okay? So that's one part of it. And then on my other two, I didn't put any paper on this little guy. I didn't think he mattered too much. But on this one, my goodness, 
I did put some paper on the top of that one. Okay, so what I think we're gonna do here, let's look at my other one. We wanna do it just a little differently this time. So I think that we're going to put, uh, this deeper one is gonna go over here to the right a little bit, and the smaller one will go over here on the left. I think that's what we'll do. Okay, so let me get some adhesive on there. Let me take a peek at the comments. We have a lot of people watching. No problem, says Brooke, thank you. <laughs> I just can't help it, city life, you know? Uh, there will inevitably be a train next, without fail. Okay, so let's see, yep, over here I'm gonna put, I put glue on the bottom and the back of this one. And I will pick this up and show you once I get it in place. Just wanna make sure I get a good adhesion. There we go, can you see that? Okay. And then I'm gonna put this little guy just to the left of it. And you could put this anywhere you want. You can slide it way out. I love pop-up projects, says Amy. Well, good, thank you. Um, there's Robin, hi Robin. She's late, but she's here. Okay, so I'm gonna give those a second to dry, but see how they're both in there now? Like little platforms in there. And um, I don't wanna to forget to mention again, Anne Acevedo was our winner from Monday's Live. She liked, she commented, and she shared, so she won a $50 gift certificate to Elizabeth Crafts. So make sure that you're doing the same. You gotta like, comment, and share to be in the drawing that Els, I believe, is coming back on Friday, and she will announce that winner. New here from Mississippi, hi Angie. Julie, Patricia, sorry to be late. Diana, don't apologize, you're here, we're happy. Okay, so there's our little pop-ups, they're still kind of drying, but you can see when I close everything down, it goes nice and flat, it's still drying, I don't wanna rush it but it does go nice and flat. Okay, we'll give that a second, and we will get a few more things ready. At this point, we can assemble the box, but what I wanna do is I want to build a few things uh, for the inside because they might need a little time to dry. So we're gonna use some of these beautiful dies from, this is from the Sidekick Essentials 12 set which has all these plants in the pot just oh, it's one of my favorites and it's it's a fairly new one so we're going to use that one uh and then later you'll see a couple of flower dyes that we're going to use i'll make sure i mention what they are but we're going to color these first and of course there's a million ways you can color uh, i have done many videos well i've done a good couple of videos now about how to shape and color flowers different media you can use to color flowers and leaves. So um, I'll be sure, if you don't know it, I will be sure to try to get my YouTube link on there. Yeah, that scallop page is really, really pretty, right? So I'm just using Distress Oxides, and right now I'm just using like peeled paint I'm not getting real particular. And while I have that color out, I'm gonna go ahead and do some more. This one is for the front. So this one comes from Floral Six. It just has a really nice leaf in there. I really like that one. So that's all I'm using from that set. But while I'm doing my peeled paint, I'm just gonna go ahead and get this one too. And you can see I'm not going out to the edges. I'm not being super neat because I know I'm going to add some more colors. Uh, let's see. We have this cutie and this one. And we already did that one. So I'm just going to do all these real quick. Oh, 
All these ones that look like plants, they're from that one set I just showed you with the scallop page. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed your pansy demo the other day. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. Yeah, I did how to, how to color a pansy five different ways, using five different types of media. You know, I tested oxides and I tested alcohol markers and watercolor paint and water base markers and distress crayons. So it was kind of a fun video. I was learning as I went along. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going in with some mowed lawn. Again, a distress oxide. I kind of prefer the oxides over the distress inks now because they blend so nicely. You never get that hard line and they're really cool and reactive with water. So I love to play with those. Liked, commented, and just shared. Angie, good job. Is uh, Ann Acevedo with us today? Has anyone seen her name go by? I wonder if she knows she won yet. Curious. So you can see I'm putting a lot of this mowed lawn on here and you might say like, gosh, you're covering up everything you just did, but that's not really true. You can still see the light color underneath and this just gives it that much more depth to add two or three colors. Instead of just one green, it would look kind of plain, I think, and flat. So that was peel paint, mowed lawn, and the last one, I will use Rustic Wilderness. And just kind of, here's the other thing. These little guys, you ever seen these guys? I got these, they look like eye makeup applicators, but I actually found them at the craft store, uh, Hobby Lobby, on the stamping aisle, which is exactly what I was looking for. You could probably buy just eyeshadow applicators, but... Uh, these work very nicely for these tight little spots. Let's say you just wanted to do the stem. And they're spongy, just like those fingertip daubers. They're pretty nice. So I will use those later again um, when I do one of the flowers. You could draw it right up the middle. So... Let's see, I'm trying to match the one I've already done over here pretty closely. So it looks like I'm gonna have to go a little heavier on the outside edges with my, my dark color. Oh, there's Terry. Hi, Terry. Anita's still watching. Mari, Lisanne is here. Am I saying your name right? Is it Lisanne, Lisanne? You'll have to tell me. Okay, there's that one's good. I think I want to leave this one a little bit light because I want it to go in the background and I want it to stand out a little bit more. And this one I'll go a little darker like before. Okay, getting nice and green over here. Uh, let me take a peek at my other one. Okay, so that's going to go behind that one like that. Yeah, so this one needs to be a little darker. I think it stand out a little bit more in front. Just popping in from Cape Cod. Those leaves are gorgeous, thank you. Okay, I think that's good for leaves for now. Uh, one more thing I really love to do, uh, I'm not gonna go any further with these two because I realized I already made them over there. So <laughs> you've seen the, the process. Uh, one more thing I really love to do, especially with oxides, is give them a little tiny spritz of water. Just a little bit. Uh, I'm just using a, a mister bottle here. And if you look closely at one I've already done, you'll see why. Can you see all the little kind of speckles and texture that it gives it? It's kind of cool. I feel like that's, that's one of my favorite things to do. So I'm gonna run the dryer just for a second. I don't have to get them super dry, but um, I just don't want them to tear when I go to shape them. So I'm gonna to try to get them a little bit dry. And I'm going off the camera a little bit so I don't keep trying to dry them in the water puddle. 
I love oxides too, Judy. Looks so real. Oh, wait till we start to shape them. So I'm just using the Heat It tool by Ranger. You can use um, the heat embossing tool. I see Elle's using that a lot. Okay, and so what you get, like I showed you with that other one, you get all these cool little spots and texture. It just adds to it, it's really nice. So let me clean this up a little bit. Yes, the florals are easy and so beautiful to create. I agree. Okay, so we got our leaves and now we're gonna give them a little shape. All right, got my little cushion mat, just a thick, dense mat. And we'll go with this guy first. And of course, I love using the large ball stylus. You can use, uh, gosh, different companies make these now. And I've, I've seen L's using like a little spoon. You can do that too, whatever you have. But I am going to use the large ball stylus and I'm just gonna start to soften the paper fibers. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm not really trying to shape anything so much at this point as um, soften up the paper. So just by kind of rubbing and, and rolling and stirring, it's really softening up that paper. And then it's so much easier to do what I wanna to do to the front in a minute. So there's that one. This one doesn't need a whole lot because he's gonna be in the background. And then this one, same thing, just a little bit. Mainly because these two I just did, they don't have any kind of vein lines going through them. So I'm just kind of giving them a little bit of shape by doing that. All right, so back to this one. I'm gonna take this tool. You can use a, this is, okay, do you guys remember this? Elizabeth Crafts had the tool kit a long while ago, has a little ball stylus on one end and it's got, I call this the scary dental tool. <laughs> Cause that's what makes me think of. Um, I like to use that for this part, but you can use a very small ball stylus as well, I believe. So I am going to start from the stem part and pull my way out to the tip. And that just put a really nice deep score line through that leaf and shaped it nicely. Now I can continue. There's a couple of lines on here uh, in the die that actually show up. I can continue to do that. Stroke these. These just have a single one. I'll just keep that simple. And then this one, I'll do a couple. But you can see it really starts to take on a nice shape. And the harder you push, the more that's gonna curl in together. Very nice. And then the only other thing that uh, I would want to do is get in there with a tweezer. And if I feel like it needs it, I just give it a little more of a pinch in there. You can come in from this way. You just don't wanna pinch all the way out to the tip of the leaf. I just pinch at the base. So that's looking pretty nice, pretty realistic. This is my other one. I hadn't done the pinching yet on this one, so you can see the difference between the two. So I will get in there real quick, pinch that. Oops. <laughs> so these two are gonna go on the top of the box, you'll see. Uh, Carol says, I learned so much from the videos. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad, Carol. Thank you. All of the videos that you see from Elizabeth Crafts, I think, are so inspirational and so helpful. I love watching Karen Gerber make her flowers. Oh, my goodness. They're beautiful. Okay, so now we need pots for our little plants. So I will do one pot, and then I'll show you my other two. So these are the two little pot pieces. <laughs> Sounds funny. You have your actual pot and then you've got the rim of the pot which goes right over the top. 
And they're so smart to make these separate like this because they really do need to be separate for them to have the proper dimension, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna go with Lucky Clover, believe it or not, which is like a patina-y kind of greenish blue. And if you've ever looked at a terracotta pot and it starts to get just a slight bit older or I don't want to say mildewy, but maybe <laughs> it gets that kind of patina look about it. So I'm just going to kind of keep that right down the center. I feel like that's so far away from you guys. Let's see. There you go. So it's kind of down the center and so is that top one. And now I'm gonna go in with carved pumpkin, which is very orange. And I'm gonna just color outside of those two ends. Jeanette Smith is watching. Els has the best design team and creators. Aw, thank you, Jane. Has anyone seen an, if Ann Acevedo is here? I hope she finds out that she won. If you're friends with her, tell her. Make sure you tell her. <laughs> okay, so I'm going pretty, pretty orange here. But the best part is the next step, and that is vintage photo to kind of age the pot a little bit. So just... I'm actually gonna go all the way around on this because this is the separator between the top of the pot and the pot itself. Okay. So I might work that a little bit darker, we'll see. I want it to match the other pots that I did, so I'll have to pull those over here in a second and show y'all. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let me look at my other ones. Uh, I'll look at this one. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty, pretty close. Looks good. And this will have to dry just a little bit because oxides uh, do need just a minute to kind of dry. So give that a second. I wonder how many of you are in the Midwest and getting snow. I'm seeing all these people post very sad and unhappy <laughs> pictures of the snow. Kathy Fortune is watching. Hildebrand is watching. Um, yeah, Greenville, oops, I'm in Greenville, South Carolina, so uh, we have like one snow, if any. And we already had it, of course good couple of weeks ago. So it was kind of exciting. Uh, but yeah, just one day. That was it. Not even a day. It was one night. Okay, there's my third little pot. Looking cute. And all I'm going to do so I can let this sit for a minute and dry is glue my little flower or my leaves into the pot. I'm gonna put those lighter guys in the back. And this guy's gonna go, oh, I should have put this in the front first, guys, right? <laughs> oh, I can get it to work. But normally you would put the one that's gonna be in the front in there first. That just makes sense, doesn't it? All right, let's see what I can do here. Yeah, squeak that behind that. anybody's ever done a live, you know that this is a little, this can be a little nerve wracking. Okay. Ooh, I did it. But it's fun at the same time. It's a good, uh, it's a good challenge once in a while. <laughs> okay. That's cute. I salvaged it. Okay. So that's cute. You can really, you know, you can use all those different leaves and really fill out the pot and make it very full and fluffy. So there's that one. And then we have this one, 
and I'm gonna add those little flowers to this one as well. And then we have, this is not, I didn't do this to the first, the sample, but I put this one in the hanging basket, which is, is that also from this die? I wanna make sure, I don't think so, hold on. Um, yes, it is also from that die, okay. So see how they both have little flowers? I'm gonna do that to my third pot. And those little flowers come from the Florals One die. And see those little guys right there? Those are like the little centers to these flowers, which are on the front of my box. See little red things in there? Uh, but I thought they made cute little independent little flowers on a small pot like this. So how we do that is, of course, you die cut all your little colors that you want and you get your mat. I did some red, some yellow, and some that were a little bit like an orange color. So I'll just do a, fr a few uh, reds and yellows here. So I have them on my cushion. And again, with a very small ball stylus. Well, actually, first I'm gonna go in with the a um, little bit bigger stylus and soften the fibers so we don't puncture right through the paper. So I'm just giving them a little stir. Okay. And then you take that little ball stylus and you just push straight down deep and hard into the mat to really make them cup. So straight down. All right, so I got these cute little tiny cupped flowers, really small. And I did a bunch over here already. So I'm gonna get some super thick tacky glue ready. And of course my Elizabeth Craft Designs, what are these called, fine pointed tweezers? And I love to use the super thick tacky glue. I talk about it all the time. Um, it is super thick, it grabs quick, it dries clear. Um, and I'm just, I just put a dot of it up on my table here and I'm just tapping my little flowers in there and sticking them down quickly. Let's see, orange. I don't know what kind of plant this would be considered, but who cares, right? That's the beauty of these, uh, all these dyes. You can make any kind of flower you want. You can make up stuff. All right, I think I'll put one more way over here. Oh, that's so cute, right? Take a little peek. Okay, so now that we have those done, I'm gonna push those aside and let those really dry. And we will make the flowers for the top. And then that way I'll have some time to come back and put our little pots on the pop-ups on the inside while the flowers are kind of setting and drying. So back to the flowers. Again, the flowers are from Florals One as well. Uh, the flowers look like that and I only use the smallest one. Okay, so I had to cut, this is how they look. We're gonna color them just a little bit different. Um, but basically two cuts for each one flower, all right? So this time we're gonna go with fossilized amber, worn lipstick, and candied apple distress oxides. Same kind of principle, let's see. But this time I'm gonna go with yellow on the outside. So fossilized amber is first out here. Hello, I'm late from Kennewick, Washington. Penny, hello, Penny. Hello, Hen is it Henneke? Uh Patricia is washing, Ina. Yeah, those macrame hangers are so pretty. I'm gonna have to work the, the big macrame, like wall hanging one. I'm gonna have to work that into my next planner page. I can't even believe I haven't used it yet. I've, I've die cut it to see how beautiful it is, but I haven't used it anywhere yet. Okay, so there's the yellow. Gosh, I better get going. 
it's 22. Okay, now I am using Warren Lipstick Pink, and I'm tapping it and pulling it out from the center to the yellow. I hope we have time at the end. I want to show you the masculine version of a pop-up pizza box that I made, which I think is going to be perfect for Father's Day for my dad. Because they live on the water. That's a hint. <laughs> okay, there's that. And then the center, you can either use the little uh, eye makeup applicator thingy if you want, or you can use a fingertip dauber if you're in a hurry, and just get some red color in there. The beauty of the oxides, of course, is if you, if you go too dark, you can kind of blend it out and kind of fix it. Okay, so that's that. I'm gonna heat set those real quick. Cindy Bosniak. Hey, Cindy. There's Sherry Henderson. Woo. Adriana. Angie. Michelle. Okay, that's probably good. Okay. So now we'll shape those flowers real quick, layer them together. And then I have two more ready over there. Okay, so let's stick my little pad. I lost it. <laughs> oh, here we go, okay. All right, so face down once again, ball stylus once again, soften the paper fibers. Okay, I'd wanna say it again. Congratulations to Anne Acevedo, who was our winner from Monday's drawing of the $50 gift certificate from Elizabeth Crafts. So make sure that if you're watching today, you like, comment, and share so you can be in the drawing for the next one, which will be announced on Friday with Els. Okay, so you saw what I did there. And now I'm gonna take my tweezer, actually, I'm gonna do a little extra around these edges, just a little bit. And I'm using the smaller ball, but that's just to get a little more curl just on the edges of those petals. Okay, and then I will go in there with my tweezer, do a little pinch halfway up. Okay, and the very last thing that I do is I give it a good push with the ball stylus so it can hold that nice shape. Okay, so I will do that again real quick here to this one. Shelly says, beautiful. Thank you, Shelly. Can't wait to see all this come together. It's so pretty. Thank you, Heather. Okay, last part, this. So yes, if you're not aware, I have made a couple of flower making videos on YouTube. Uh, basically, one of them is uh, how to make beautiful paper flowers and more. And I show not only how to make the flowers, but I also show things you can do once you've made flowers. Like not just the flowers, but what they can go on and what kind of cute projects you can make. So we'll make sure that we get my YouTube channel up there. Isn't it terrible? I can't remember if I'm on YouTube as a net green or a net M green. Okay, so there's our little flower. And the last step that I did is I took three or four more of these little red flowers and I put them in the center. So just to save some time, I will show you how that looks done. I went ahead and did that already. So they're all in there kind of squished. So I'll put that one aside and use that one later. 
but I did do three over here. Okay. All right, now let's go back to the inside of the box. Take a look at the comments. Oh, Jane, you're very nice. Your videos are always amazing. Cute pizza box project. Love this, says Margaret. Thank you. Cinda Garrett is watching. Sue Blackburn is watching. Michelle Campbell. Oh, thank you very much. Somebody has put my YouTube uh, link there. It is Annette M. Green. Okay, now we all know, right? All right, make sure my little pop-ups are working. That looks good in there. Okay, so here we are back to the inside, and we're going to add... First, we're going to add this cutie... I think, I gotta think it through here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to snip this off. He's not gonna quite fit. So that one's gonna go there, yeah. So I'll get a little glue on the back of that. This one is not gonna be popped up at all. It's just gonna be in the background, just for something different and fun. So I'm gonna put it way over here. I already had a little uh, double-sided adhesive behind that top part, so that's easy. All right, and then we're going to put our, let's see, who, 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 who. This one is really full. We want to be able to see our birds. So I'm thinking this out. Maybe we'll put that a little bit. Yeah, I think we'll put this more in the center this time. My other sample, I had it way off to the right, so. Of course, we don't want to put any glue. Um, oh, this is key. So when we put glue, we can't put any glue on this little half inch score right here, just this part here, because that's the part that moves and this one is not. I mean, it's gonna move forward, but you don't want anything glued to that bending score area in there, okay? So the pot just fits on that first bend. And then we will put some adhesive on our second pot here, or third, I should say. And that's gonna go on this little pop-up over here. Isn't that cute? Look at that. Really cute, okay. And then I fussy cut some little birds from the bird watcher paper. And they're gonna sit on that last little pop-up. Down there. Okay, looks cute, right? So that's gonna need a second to dry. I will show you some other things that I have ready over here that we're gonna put on the top. And so, like before, this is the scallop square that is part of the pizza box die, and this is the pretty paper I've been using. So I cut that for the front. These are some postage stamps that I cut around with some little Fisker scissors, and I fanned them together and gave them a little bit of a curve. They're gonna go on there. And then, um, I love this die, you guys. This is the mandala die from the art journal series. Looks like this. Uh, there's just one in there. That's all there is. It's great. And so I did two. I did an ivory one and a red one, and I have fo foam tape on the back to pop them up. Uh, on my sample, I only did a white one, and I put blue behind the openings in the center. So you can do it all different ways. You could even do three or four and rotate them around. It looks really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and get these ready. And I think we can go ahead and start to assemble the top stuff. I think that's plenty dry. Uh, at this point, you could put the box together for sure, um, but I'm just gonna gently smush everybody down just for the live purposes and get this going. Make sure I watch my direction here. You guys, don't let me forget, I have got to show you the, the masculine thing that I made with the pizza box at the end. So there's that. We've got our mandala, which I think I want to go like that. Okay. 
And then these guys, I'm trying to see my sample. Yeah, okay, so these guys should go next. They're gonna be over here. And see how they're curving up? That's kind of a nice little dimension there. Okay, before I get too far, I gotta get these leaves on here. It's a must have. Yeah, that mandala dye, Jane, is that what you're talking about? For sure. It's like, it's like the most unique doily, in my opinion. <laughs> Whoops. All right, so I think we'll put this one kind of over here, overlapping our postage stamps a little bit. And this one will come down at the bottom. And I'm just putting a little glue down the, the stem not all across the backs of those leaves. So I think I'll have this one come down here. Very fun to see you working, says Cree. Is it Cree or Crea? Quite something different to make. Thank you. Okay, and then let's see, we have little birds. I cut out another bird. Uh, I cut out several because I couldn't decide. <laughs> So what do you guys think? On this one here, I, I did the hummingbird. I kind of like the hummingbird still, but aren't they pretty? That's just from the paper. I think I'm gonna go with that again. And I am gonna pop it up with a little foam tape. Just one little piece back there, one or two. That'll do. Okay, this goes maybe right about there. He's saying hello to him. <laughs> and then this is where I'll come in with my super thick. Because the flowers are more dimensional and bulky. Okay, cool. Now, one extra thing that I like to do on all my little pizza boxes, which I probably wish I'd have done before I put all this stuff on here because now we have to wait for it to dry, but I like to cut little, just under a half of an inch wide strips, like border strips like these, to go around these sides. Uh, as you can see, I've done it on this one. I've done it on all the, the boxes I've ever made. <laughs> So it just makes it that much prettier. Um, you can see here, I've done it on all of these, all the way around the edges. Just a nice little extra touch that doesn't take much effort at all. Uh, I did notice that I had done a little stamping. Enjoy today. That's actually from one of the new stamp sets from Esther, Planted with Love, Enjoy Today. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just pop that on there. How are we doing on time here? 2.53, we're doing good, okay. I'll have time to show you my masculine box. So I'm just gonna sneak that under the bird over there. Okay, all right, so I'm going to just put this aside. It's got to dry for a second, otherwise I'm gonna ruin everything we just did. But I will mention that if you want to put something inside, like my sample, this is the same cut apart from the paper, and it says, a little bird told me, which you can leave that in there, but I stamped on another piece of paper, Happy Mother's Day, and I patched right over that, so you can always do that. Uh, for this next one I'm making, I stamped happy birthday. So I'm gonna patch that on over that eventually. Uh, but just know that you don't wanna get it in there uh, until you've written something. <laughs> Cause now it's gonna be very difficult for me to write my mom a little message. <laughs> so do it, write it first and then glue it in. Uh, that's just a little tip. All right, so while that's drying, we're gonna look at my masculine project. And the inspiration was from my little 
book that I made here with the uh, the mini TN. I don't know if anybody saw this. This is also probably on my YouTube or somewhere, uh, but it's made with Graphic 45's Catch of the Day collection, which I thought would be perfect for a masculine pizza box. So here it is. So no flowers to speak of. Uh, used Yosette's die with the um, the lighthouse die and it has the little uh, seagulls up there. So I put that on the front. But if you notice in the background, the globe, that is from Planner Essentials 28, the globe. Oh, it's one of my favorites. I love it. So that's in the background there with the wonderful Graphic 45 paper and, um, of course, the accents around the outside. And the inside is a pop-up and it's just a little different. It's got the globe on the globe stand. I, I stamped dad and I used a little chipboard tag there and there on different, this one only has two pop-ups. Um, and, and I just wanted to share something cool that I discovered about this circle, okay? So this is the globe that I'm talking about in the globe stand and it says travel the world. But I didn't really want that. I just wanted the globe. So I die cut it and I left the letters in there. I didn't pop them out or anything. And I discovered that the die for the pizza box, one of the circles fits pretty nicely right over the front of that globe. It's this, um, not the smallest one, but the stitched, yeah, the stitched circle one that's the next largest size up. So that was kind of a cool discovery. That fit really nicely on the globe. I can always, you know, put a little something more on there for decoration. But um, yeah, we have this little area here for a message, which I have stuck in this time with a little removable adhesive, knowing what I know now. So <laughs> there's my little masculine version. I just thought that'd be fun to share. Now let's go back real quick, see if this is dry enough. I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna carefully put it together and take a peek at the comments one more time. Your tutorial has been fantastic, says Vanessa. Thank you so much. These are so cute, love the boxes. Thank you, Annette, wonderful live. Well, thank you guys all for watching very much. Um, last time I was a little short, shorter than the time that I was allotted. <laughs> so I just kind of said, see you later, sorry, that's it. Uh, but today it looks like I'm gonna go a little bit over, but I think that'll be okay. That manly box is fabulous. Ginger's here. Hey, Ginger. <laughs> oh, that's my sister, sorta. Okay. Yeah, you guys are great. This whole community is great. Els was saying it on Monday and I couldn't agree more. It's like, we have the best fans. We have the greatest design team. So much fun. Everybody's so willing to share and uh, excited to share. Okay, I think I just had this last little bit and we're done. Then I'll show it to you. Pat, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay, our last little tab. Uh, yes, the cardstock that you make the pizza box out of is important. It needs to be pretty sturdy. This particular cardstock that I used for the blue box is a little bit thinner. I'm going to just pop this in there so you guys can see it all finished. Um, but it's a little bit thinner, so um, I would want to reinforce it a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, I don't have time, I don't think, to put these on, but you guys can use your imagination and see that that's gonna look really pretty with those on the front. But so what I'll do is I'll put them on, I'll take a nice little photo of a couple of different angles with the box open and closed, and we'll make sure that um, Els or Anna puts that on the Elizabeth Craft Designs Facebook page. So thank you guys all for watching. We do have the best group here, Els. I couldn't agree more. Uh, thanks so much for watching, you guys. I'm going to sign off for now and finish up my little box. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.